Hello everyone, welcome to my channel MLT Academy. Today we'll be discussing about urine analysis part 1 which includes collection, preservation and physical examination of urine. So we all know that urine is one of the most common specimen which is examined in our laboratory. Now let us see what all details do we get after examining a urine specimen. We can know about the functioning of kidneys, about the abnormalities of urinary tract, other systemic diseases, we can detect pregnancy and also drug overdose and we can investigate parasitic infections. Next is about the collection of urine. So depending upon how the urine is collected, we can divide the specimen into different types. First one is the early morning specimen which is obtained during the first urination of the day. So that is a urine which is voided when the patient first arises from his night sleep. So this will be the most concentrated specimen and it will have the lowest pH. And this specimen is used for the examination of nitrite, protein, formed elements and also for microscopic examination. Second one is the random specimen which is obtained at any time and for routine urine examination, this type of urine specimen is usually adequate. Third one is the postprandial specimen, which is obtained two hours after meal. And this is used for glucose estimation, uh, for example, in case of glucose tolerance test and glucose challenge test, etc. Fourth one is the 24 hour specimen, which is, which is a specimen obtained within 24 hours. And how will you collect a 24 hour specimen? The early morning specimen or the early morning urine is discarded and all the urine voided in the next 24 hours including the early morning of early morning specimen the next day is taken. So this is the 24 hour urine specimen. And this is used for quantitative tests like protein estimation, concentration of tubercle bacilli etc. And for taking this type of specimen you have to obtain large containers which is sufficient to hold 2 liters of urine. And fifth one is a clean catch midstream urine specimen. And this is basically used for bacteriological examination. And since it is a clean catch specimen, before collecting the specimen you have to clean the external genital area with mild soap and water. And the urine, the first part of the urine is usually discarded because it may be contaminated with the normal flora and the middle part of the urine is taken in sterile collection bottles and it is then used for bacteriological examination. Next, we will see about the preservation of urine. Generally, the urine is examined within 1-2 to two hours of collection and if there is a delay, you have to preserve the urine. So what happens when the urine is allowed to stand for long hours without any preservative? First, it may lead to the growth of bacteria and thereby breakdown of urea to ammonia which causes an increase in pH and precipitation of calcium and phosphates. It, it also leads to oxidation of urobilinogen to urobilin, destruction of glucose by bacteria and also the lysis of RBC, WBC and cast. Nextly, let us see about urinary preservatives. First one is toluene. Toluene is the best all-round preservative and it forms a thin layer on the surface of urine and the major disadvantage is that it interferes with the sulfosalicylic acid method of protein estimation. Second one is boric acid. So the quantity is 5 gram per 4 O's, 4 ounces or 120 ml of urine. Concentrated hydrochloric acid, you have to take 10 ml per 24 hour specimen and it is the best preservative for all chemical examination including calcium, uric acid, creatinine and urea. Next is thymol. So you have to add 1 crystal of thymol of 5 mm diameter per 100 ml of urine but it interferes with sugar, acetone and diastic acid examination. Next is formalin. You have to add one drop per 30 ml of urine and it preserves the urine sediment but it interferes with the sugar test. Next is sodium carbonate which is usually 
used for the preservation of urobilinogen so this is very important sodium carbonate is used for the preservation of urobilinogen and you have to add half teaspoon per urine sample chloroform usually preserves aldosterone levels and you should add one tablet per 60 ml of urine next is refrigeration it is allowed only for up to 3 to 6 hours and if there is a delay of urine examination for more than 6 hours you have to add additional preservative and the freezing is allowed only for specimen transport but the major disadvantage is that it may destroy the formed elements so refrigeration and freezing is allowed only for special purposes and it is not used usually next is about the physical examination of urine first one is volume the normal urine volume the normal range is 1200 to 2000 ml per day and there are certain condition in which the urine volume may be varied first one is oliguria oliguria is a condition with decreased quantity of urine polyuria is a condition with increased quantity of urine and urea means total suppression of urine and nocturia means increased quantity of urine at night next is color normally the urine is having a straw to dark amber color and the pigments which are responsible for the urine color is urochrome which provides yellow color and is present in highest proportion uroerythrin which gives red color and urobilin which gives orange yellow color what is the clinical significance of variation in color of the urine clear red is seen in hemoglobinuria cloudy red in hematuria reddish brown due to the presence of porphyrins or urobilinogen brownish yellow or green is due to bile pigments milky urine is seen in chyluria a condition of filariasis and dark brown urine which changes to black on standing is usually seen in alkaptonuria next is odor normally the urine is having a slight aromatic odor odor means smell and on standing for long hours it gives a pungent odor presence of ketone bodies may give sweet fruity odor and in tyrosinuria it will have fishy or cabbage like or rancid butter smell cystinuria or homocystinuria sulfurous odor brewers yeast odor in ostow syndrome burn sugar odor in maple syrup urine disease and mousy odor in phenyl ketonuria and sweaty feet odor in isovaleric acidemia so these are the important question in mcqs so this is very important next is the appearance or transparency of urine normally urine is clear and transparent and the cloudiness of the urine can be due to normal or physiological condition and also due to pathological condition so which is the physiological or normal condition in which the urine appears cloudy if the urine is having a neutral or alkaline ph the presence of amorphous phosphate may cause cloudiness but it disappears on adding dilute acetic acid and in case of acid urine the presence of amorphous urates may cause cloudiness but it is disappears on heating and cloudiness in pathological condition can be due to the presence of wbcs or pustules which is cleared by filtering bacteria or fungi which is cleared by centrifugation colloidal due to the presence of fat or chyle next is about the reaction or ph normal range or the normal ph range of urine is 4.6 to 8 commonly it is having a slightly acidic ph of 6 and in people who follows a vegetarian diet they will have a slightly alkaline ph and increased consumption of meat causes acidic ph and the most important point to note is that formed elements are well preserved in acid urine and are disintegrated in alkaline urine and the ph of urine is usually measured by using litmus paper nitrous resin paper dipstick and also glass electrodes now let us move on to the specific gravity of urine so what is specific gravity 
it is the ratio of weight of fixed volume of solution to the same volume of water and the specific gravity of urine sediment will give an indication of the total amount of solids in solution in that urine and the normal specific gravity is 1.015 to 1.025 in a 24 hour specimen and if this urine specific gravity is less than 1.007 the condition is called as hyposthenuria and in case of renal disease the urine specific gravity will be fixed at 1.010 and this condition is referred to as isosthenuria. And how will you determine urine specific gravity? By means of a urinometer, refractometer and also by reagent strip. Refractometer actually measures the refractive index of the urine and it requires only one or two drops of urine so that is a basic advantage of this method. The most commonly used method for determining specific gravity of urine is a urinometer. So the urinometer will be having a measuring scale which is calibrated from 1.000 to 1.060 and each division equals 0.001. So this is basically the measurement of urine specific gravity by using urinometer. So you have to fill 3 fourth of a measuring cylinder or a container with urine and you have to dip the urinometer into the urine so that the mercury bulb which is present at the bottom of the urinometer does not touch the bottom of the container. And you have to note the reading at the eye level by noting the lower level of meniscus. And what is urinometer correction? Usually the urinometer is calibrated for a certain temperature 15 degrees centigrade or 20 degrees centigrade. So if the measurement of specific gravity of urine is taken above or below the temperature of calibration of the urine you have to correct the urinometer. So this is the equation. For each 3 degrees centigrade above the temperature of calibration you have to add 0.001 and for each 3 degree centigrade below the temperature of calibration you have to subtract 0.001 that is about the temperature correction next is correction of albumin so if the urine contains more than 1 gram per deciliter of albumin you have to correct the specific gravity for albumin you have to deduct 0.001 from the observed specific gravity for each 1 gram per deciliter of albumin. How will you check the accuracy of urinometer? It is usually measured by detecting the specific gravity of distilled water at the temperature of its calibration and it should be 1.000. Next is a calculation for the amount of solids in urine from specific gravity by using Long's coefficient. So total amount of solids in gram per liter of urine is equal to 2.6 into last two digit of specific gravity of a 24 hour specimen at 15 degree centigrade. For example, if the specific gravity of urine is 1.0 to 5 at 15 degree centigrade, the total amount of solids in urine is equal to 2.6 which is the Long's coefficient into the last two numbers of specific gravity which means 25. So 2.6 into 25 is equal to 65 grams per liter per day. So this is how you have to calculate the total amount of solids in urine from urine specific gravity. So you have to use the Long's coefficient for this and the average amount of solids in urine is 60 grams per day.